They say that a private pilot's license is a license to learn, and it is so true. I've probably learned more about flying since getting my license than during the 70 hours or so of training that I undertook. In a series of videos over the coming months, I'm going to share with you some of the tips, tricks, and learning points that they don't teach you at flying school. And today, we're going to talk about descent planning. I'm going to show you the formulas that I use for perfect descents and give you a demonstration. Clear prop! But for those of you who don't have time to watch the full video and are just here for the formula, it's on the screen now. Thanks for watching. So what we're going to do today is climb up to 7,000 feet and then determine at what point we need to start a descent and at what rate we need to descend at in order to arrive in the overhead of an airfield at 2,000 feet above aerodrome level. That's the plan. Let's see how it goes. Two, three, 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 During my training, I never really climbed above 2,300 feet. I never leaned the fuel mixture either. That's another video, by the way. And I don't remember being taught how to plan my descents from altitude. That's all fine when you're training, but once you've got your license, you tend to leave the training area, go further afield, go higher to make better use of the performance at altitude. But then you're left with a problem. You've got to come back down again. It might sound easy, just chop the power and point the nose towards the ground. Well, if you value your aircraft's engine and want to avoid having to make a forced landing, don't do that. A long descent on low or idle power will cause your engine to shock cool. The oil might congeal, the cylinders could crack, and when you come to add power again, you might find you have none. As well as that, if you're up at 7,000 feet, coming down isn't going to be quick. And if you want to be at circuit altitude by the airfield, you're going to have to think ahead. So I'm going to show you how I do this now, uh, how I descend, how I manage the engine as well, which is even more important in this aircraft because it's got a turbocharger. And I'm going to show you a couple of rules of thumb that I use that, if used accurately, flown accurately, can get you to an exact altitude and an exact point in space. It's very clever when it works. We're at 7,200 feet now, to the east of Earl's Cone, and I want to be at Earl's Cone's overhead at 2,200 feet. I'll then do an overhead join and land. Echelon Air is a flying school designed around you, your schedule and your goals. Based at Biggin Hill Airport near London, Echelon operates a modern fleet of Cirrus aircraft, benefiting from all the latest technology, comfort and safety features. The team of instructors are there to guide you through your training and beyond, helping you to get the most out of your licence and aircraft ownership. Get in touch with Echelon Air today. OK, so here we are levelling off at 7,200 feet and we're going to make our turn back towards Earl's Cone. So the first question is, when do we commence our descent? Now there's a simple rule of thumb for this, just going to make my turn here now. We want to be in the overhead at Earl's Cone at 2,200 feet which is Earl's Cone's overhead altitude. So we've got 5,000 feet of altitude to lose from our current altitude. So the rule of thumb is multiply the number of thousands of feet of altitude you want to lose by three, and that will give you your top of descent. So we need to commence our descent at 15 miles to run to Earl's Cone. But then we need to know at what rate of descent we want to descend at in order to reach 2,000 feet at exactly the overhead height. And there's another rule of thumb for that. So you take your ground speed, you multiply that by 10, and then half it. So I'm going to say our ground speed is 120 knots, times it by 10, that's 1,200, then half it, that's 600. 600 feet per minute will be our rate of descent. Now that would be okay if we didn't build up speed on the descent. 
and our ground speed is probably going to be more like 130 knots. So that will be 650 feet per minute. And then we need to think about the engine and how we don't shock cool the engine. Now the way we do that is by on the turbo here, just knocking an inch or two off the power and pitching forward. So we descend on power. We don't shock the throttle and shock cool the engine. Okay, so we've just turned 15 miles. I'm going to knock a couple of inches off here. I'm going to turn towards Earl's Cone and I pitch forward and I need 600 feet per minute. And we will build up quite a bit of speed doing that. Now, as we come down, the wind speed and direction will likely change. And so we'll have to keep checking our ground speed and keep doing the calculations to check we're on target. So we're going a bit faster than we anticipated. And what we have to do is periodically check on the way down that things are working out, but we must have 650 feet per minute or this won't work. I'm going to say 750 feet per minute because our ground speed is more like 140. Yeah, so I'm going to take 700 feet per minute. So then all, all I'm doing is taking 140, times it by 10, dividing it by 2. That's working out perfectly. As we descend, for every 1,000 feet we descend on a engine with uh, a variable pitch propeller, you have to come back on the, on the uh, power for every 1,000 feet you descend. By descending on power, I'm helping to keep the engine warm rather than blasting it with cold air in the descent. But it can be tricky descending on power, especially on a turbulent day, because you'll want to keep below your manoeuvring speed. A tailwind can make this whole process a little tricky to manage as well. In some cases, I might use gear and flap to keep the speed under control. Also, it's worth remembering that at higher descent rates, your passengers might get a bit of earache with the rapid pressure increases. In the past, to manage this, I've perhaps begun my descent earlier, say at double the distance, and then I've halved the rate of descent. I recently visited the UK headquarters of AOPA UK. They were running one of their flight instructor refresher courses. Flight instructors, and in my case, class rating instructors, need to undergo regular training to keep their ratings valid. The two-day course costs £325 for non-members, discounted to £275 for AOPA UK instructor members. They're taking bookings now for their next course, which is on the 19th and 20th of November. Book your session on the AOPA UK website now. So we're still coming down at 140 knots on the ground speed. We're good for airspace. We're, in fact, we're clear for airspace now. And uh, we've got a thousand feet to lose. That's three miles. We are exactly three miles. So this is working out perfectly. So here we are in the overhead. And we're pretty much there, 2,000 feet height above the airfield. There you are, something that I didn't learn in my training that's turned out to be a really useful trick now that I'm flying further and farther afield. Maybe you have a different method for calculating your top of descent and your descent rate. Maybe you have a different method for managing your engine. If so, pop them in the comments. And if you like the video, be sure to subscribe, like, hit the notification bell as well, and sign up for my free newsletter that you'll find a link to on my website.